that to me tells me he's lost. He's trying mm -hmm. different things. He doesn't know exactly where he is. He's a lot more confident when he's using the slider as a wipeout pitch and he's using the fastball because his fastball up in the zone is elite. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. This episode of Locked On Yankees is brought to you by Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, The right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals. Check out Booking.com for your stay today. With me as usual is my co-host, Brian McKeon. Brian. Coaching, coaching, coaching. Yeah, it didn't end well, but... And it's frustrating how it ended, but two out of three with the way they came into the weekend, I will take that. Yeah, but wouldn't you have rather have them lost the uh, the, the game the normal way and just uh, you know be down oh. be down three have a three two loss normal loss and 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 go out like like that instead you go out like this where you were going into the all star break with all this confidence right even if you lo if you lost two out of three losing the game three to two. You go into the All-Star break with all this confidence. You still took two out of three from the Orioles. You bounce back. You can go in with a lot of confidence. Then you lose a game like this where you shoot yourself in the foot a lot. Uh, again, proving my point that uh, Clay Holmes is not a big game closer. He's just not. He hasn't been the same guy since the end of April, really. He's been awful. Um, blows the save. Can't throw a strike to save his life at the end of the game. And bad coaching. And, and I have to mention this, too. I mean, it, part of it is on the manager. It is. Yeah. Why, are they, why is Verdugo playing in? There's two outs. If Verdugo's playing deeper in the outfield or in his normal position, he catches the ball as an easy fly ball and the game's over. Why, why are you playing defense in like that with two outs in the game? It made absolutely – and that's – I'm sorry, Stacey. Like, again, we all talk about we, – we, we love it. Great manager, players manager. The guys are comfortable at all that. That's his job. That's Aaron Boone's job. I mean, that, that goes back to Little League. That goes back to – Minor leagues, it goes back to every level of baseball possible. You have to know as a manager where your guys are playing. Why is Verdugo playing so in there? Why? It made absolutely not, no remote sense whatsoever. And then you lose a game. Losing a game like that is so much worse than if they would have went out good night in a 3-2 game. It would have been. Actually, I would have preferred if they lost, like, I don't know, 6-1 because, um, sure. because Rodon was pitching horribly. And the fact that they that he only gave up two runs, he didn't pitch that great. We'll we'll no. get into it when we actually get into the show. Wait, let's start with. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast, please. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. On no, every you. every podcasting platform imaginable, you can join them. Uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like the video, hit the bell so you're notified. So obviously, we'll be talking about the series in Baltimore. We'll be talking about you know the fact that the Yankees did actually win a series. Thank goodness for the first time in what seems like five years. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the new home run derby rules, right? Is that yeah. what we're doing in segment three? Yeah, because I don't even know about them. So all I know is that there's 40 pitches and something weird happening. So I'll be happy to learn about what's happening in the home run derby. Um, if you guys can tell, Brian is in a hotel room because he is in Texas for yes, all star festivities. And we are recording this literally right after the game ended, which is why he's so heated. If it were a couple hours later, Brian might not have been as heated. He just would have been annoyed. So let's get into it. Let's start with Rodon because we have to talk about the fact that yes, he only gave up two runs. Yes. He struck out seven. Yes. He walked three, but he pitched more than 90 pitches again mm -hmm. in only four innings. The command wasn't there. It should have been way worse than it was. It's just, he ran into an Orioles team that couldn't really do much coming into the game. And, you know, it was just, you know, he, the first inning, he didn't give up any runs and he looked okay. And I thought, Oh, Hey, maybe he figured some stuff out. Too good to be true. <laughs> it's an Orioles team over the last month that really hasn't been able to hit, right? So you have to take these Yankees starts with a, with, a, with a grain of salt because you really don't know if they're pitching well or the Orioles can't hit because they haven't been able to hit in the last month. We've talked about it a while, too. With the fact that the Yankees have been playing as bad as they've been playing, the fact that the Orioles only have a two-game lead on them is kind of sad. Because one game. Yeah, one game one lead game. now. It's kind of sad because the Orioles really, in reality, should be seven, eight, nine, almost uh, double-digit games over the Yankees with how bad the Yankees have been. The Orioles just can't hit over the last month. Um, I agree with you. Um, if you were, it, it, you look at the stat line here and you think, all right, you know, a little bit of bounce back start for Rodon. I feel the exact opposite. I don't think it was a bounce back start. He didn't no, look good in this. 
Right. He didn't look like, good. He threw over 90 pitches in, into the fourth inning. His usage yeah. I did like more, though. He did use we're the gonna show that more. Yep. Um, we're we're going to show that. Yeah. So if, if you want to put that graphic up, because well, I actually, no, this is see. this graphic is the last start where he used the fastball more. Mm -hmm. Right. And we showed this the last time he started. So it was fastball, change up, slider, curveball in that order. Today, he pitched see, slider more. That's Cy Young Rodon right there. The the four seamer the slide the slider using those two pitches to couple each other that that is what works with this with, with him that is that is his his repertoire he's added the change up in years past and he's sort of brought that curveball he doesn't use a lot in, in but his his bread and butter is that fastball slider combo it's always been that way with him so yeah when I see when I see his last start when he's using the change up more he's using the four seamer more and he's not actually um using the slider to be effective and to strike guys out. That to me tells me he's lost. He's trying mm -hmm. different things. He doesn't know exactly where he is. He's a lot more confident when he's using the slider as a wipeout pitch and he's using the fastball because his fastball up in the zone is elite. Um, but I agree with you. He battled all day. And I, there is something to be said about a guy that goes, you know, into the game and only gives up two runs and can't find the zone and still gets out of that game with only two runs. So I, I can give him that. Right. But overall, it wasn't an unbelievably strong performance. He couldn't find the zone. I mean, truth be told, none of the Yankees pitchers can really find the zone today, especially Clay Holmes. But, you know, I'll give it a bounce back start going. It's a start. I'll give, let's, let's call it this. Rodon can use this start for himself going into the all-star break, feeling confident. And that's right. all that really should matter. The one problem I have with him is there was a questionable call in an at bat that resulted in a walk. And then he gave up the home run, which put the Orioles up 2-1. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to know as a professional pitcher that you're going to have umps making calls like that all yeah. the time, it seems. And you can't have that affect you to the point where you get so frustrated that, that you then give up a home run because you're throwing a pitch right down the middle that anyone could hit, oh which is what God. he did. Um, uh, so, yes, this is something to build on because it wasn't as bad as other starts, but something needs to be done with the command because my God, he was just, it was all over the place. Well, especially and, with a guy like him where, where command is again, that, that's part of his, he's not a guy who's going to beat you on pure stuff. He knows how right. to locate. He knows how to put pitches where they're going to, where they're supposed to go. That's yeah. his, that's his value as a pitcher. Um, again, it isn't a great place for him to pitch. Also um, Camden yards in the summertime, the ball flies out of that place yeah. and he is, and Rodon's a fly ball pitcher. So this right. this did have the makings of being like like a, a miniature home run derby for Baltimore, and it didn't become <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah, thank can God. Can we mention? Can we mention too? By the way, um, that that left field. It. I mean, I know they wanted to change it and everything like that, and there were too many home runs in the past. But dear God, what are we doing? It's no, but it's hurting. It's, it, but it's hurting them now. And they yeah, it's like you know, some of them complained about it last season that it's oh, like you know, okay, we understand much. that you were sick of Aaron Judge and. Labor Torres and people like that hitting home runs in Camden or Giancarlo Stanton. Like mm -hmm. all those guys were always hitting the ball over that wall because it was easy to do. It's the and, reversal now. But now it's not helping their own team. So yeah. that's Cause now, just... cause now they're a power hitting team. Yeah. Now they're a power hitting team that drives ball and they don't drive anything out now because you can't other than Gunnar Henderson. Um, right. I just you know that this again, this had all the makings of being a series, even if you lose it three, two, and, and you just, you just, you, you know, it had all the makings of being one of those series that you can really go into the break with a lot of confidence. And instead you lose the game like this. It's like, he just flip flopped right around. It really yeah. does feel that way. Yeah. Well, they have a, a habit of doing this. Let's not forget that game in Houston. When was that? 21 mm -hmm. when they were up like exactly. seven, two and they were walked off on. So it's just something that Boone teams do. Um, I was not, I, I why is Alex Verdugo batting uh, cleanup? I don't know why he's that part. The, the usage of Alex Verdugo is annoying to me. And I, I actually like him as a player. I yeah. do. I, I, th I think he's a solid player. I think he's an everyday player that you can plug into the bottom part of your order. He gives you productive at-bats. He's a tremendous fielder. I don't have a problem with those. But, like, again, people look at that last play in the field where, where he trips and falls and the ball gets passed. I can't blame Verdugo on that play. Right. Like, he should not be playing that in. But baseball players are not, are not deciding on every at-bat where they're going to play. It's not, right. they, you know, they are told where to play and having him play in right there with two outs and the bases are loaded, pop fly, that ball gets caught. If that ball gets, gets caught an inch from the warning track, game's still over. Yankees mm -hmm. still win. To, to have him playing in to prevent what? 
made right. absolutely unbelievably no sense. And and I'm sorry, that's on coaching. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, there were a couple of, I don't know. Verdugo, um, at one point in the game, I think Brian Hoke put it up on Twitter that he was 16 for his last 100. Yeah, he's struggling. But yeah, yes. pencil him into the cleanup spot. And then when people are like, well, who else would be there? Well, there are guys who are actually hitting a little better than 16 for their last 100 that you could plug in there. How about you I put just... Zolpi back in the leadoff spot and you and you move Ben Rice back to the four spot? Mm. I mean, there's a, a little idea I came up with in three seconds. I mean, there, and there's and there's other things I can look at the lineup and figure other things out too. But this giving up attitude on Volpe being a leadoff hitter because he struggled, and now you're moving Ben Rice up there. I, I I don't get it. I don't I don't get the lineup construction at all. Yeah, I don't either. So yeah, Sunday was a bummer. The series as a whole was not a bummer because, you know, we were expecting the worst and two out of three is good. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on our videos, hit the notification so you know when our videos go up. Also reply to the pinned comment on our videos Monday through Thursday if you want your questions answered for our Fan Mail Friday episode. We do it every week. It's a lot of fun. Or you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club where you get top priority on Fan Mail Friday. You can send us texts. We'll send you texts about the game. I'm, uh, I am haven't looked yet because we literally started filming this right after the game ended. But I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interesting texts from our insiders about Sunday's game. There's a 14-day free trial. Please join us there. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the series as a whole. This episode of Locked on Yankees is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, it's summer and that means baseball, but summer also means travel. So why not mix the two? Don't you think it's time you explored some of those cities around the country that you secretly wanted to learn about? Yes, we're talking Yankees rival cities. Planning a trip to Fenway to see the Yankees take on the Red Sox? Booking.com makes it a breeze, and it's not just about hotels. You can choose from a variety of accommodations like bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and more, all with the convenience of Booking.com. On Booking.com, you can find the perfect stay, even in your base in your baseball team's rival city. And for Yankee fans, that means more than just Boston. You can get Baltimore and Tampa, too. You can book hotels that overlook stadiums or book family-friendly resorts. Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for all of your summer travel this MLB season. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. Book today on Booking.com and or on the site or in book the Booking.com app. And Locked On Yankees is also brought to you by Supply House. Get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trades, SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need, a, need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trade can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to the dedicated phone line, sh free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM for Trade Master. And order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few quick clicks at supplyhouse.com. Welcome back to Locked On Yankees. Locked On Sports Today is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the noise. Locked On Sports Today brings you canvas analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And don't forget that you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. Stacey, going into this series, um... Losing that Tampa series. You won game two of the Tampa series, and you thought, all right, they take game three. Then you go into Baltimore. You'll probably lose the Baltimore series, but you know what? Maybe a little bit of a high note going into the All-Star break. It went completely the way that we didn't think it was going to go because you know no. you can't explain baseball. No. You lose game three of the Tampa series really in an uncompetitive way, and then you go forward into the Baltimore series. You win games one and two, and you think, how in the heck? How are they beating Baltimore in the first two games? Baltimore can't score. Baltimore can't hit. 
And then you lose this game three. To me, it puts such a damper on a on a on an all star break preview of of feeling good, right? Because you really, again, you lose this Baltimore game in in so much more of a laissez faire way. And you just go forward. You lost the game, but you won two out of three. You go into the break, and then you go into the end of July and the rest of August. Where we'll get into the rest of their August schedule because it's very easy. Um, where you can start to gain some momentum. And now I feel like you lose this game the way you lost it to Baltimore. It, A, reemphasizes Brian Cashman needs to get a, a legitimate closer at the deadline. Like I, I think Spencer Jones, is who's going to be playing the Futures game in a few hours, Spencer Jones is a absolute 100% candidate to be traded for a Mason Miller type because you need that. If you're going to win a World Series, you need a legitimate closer, and they don't have that right now. But also, because as I've said earlier in the shows, i got to mention this, We've said this for weeks, and I brought this point up, and we can keep bringing it up a million times until there's a trade that's made. That This this was a mid-July game against Baltimore that started at 11.30 in the afternoon, and Clay Holmes had the yips and couldn't close the game out and couldn't, th- <laughs> couldn't throw a strike. How do you think it's going to work out, Yankee fans, when it's October 20th and it's 30 degrees outside and people are shivering and the crowd is going crazy on the road? Do you think it's going to work out the same way? Do you really Again, think it's going to be 30 degrees in October with the way climate change is happening so quickly? <laughs> no, it's probably going to be 10. But that's my point. Um, do you really, really in your heart of hearts, I know there's a, there's a, a portion of the Yankee fan, fan base that believes in Clay Holmes. Do you really in your heart of hearts believe if an 11.30 a.m. Roku start on a Sunday before the All-Star break in Baltimore in front of like 13,000 people, do you really, if he had the yips in that game, do you really think October against a really tough lineup is going to be a game that he's going to close out easily? They need a closer. They, 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 he is not a legitimate 1A type closer. And most teams don't win World Series without those guys. They just don't. You, that, that's part of the equation. You need that to win a World Series. True. Although, you know, the, uh, the V squared team didn't help. Volpe didn't help. Verdugo didn't no, help. No, you're right. <laughs> you know, like we always say, Holmes is the type of pitcher who pitches to contact. Occasionally he'll get the strikeout on like his wicked slider or whatever pitch that is, but he pitches to contact. You need to have strong defense behind him. And there have been times where the defense has not done what they're supposed to do. I mean, I that the Volpe just, play. I'm, yeah, so it's not completely. Let's not totally blame Holmes. Like, yeah, it wasn't great, but let's. I mean, but this, this has happened enough, though. This is the no, sixth, I know, no, the I know. Sixth but... blown save for him of the year. That's yeah. the most in baseball. Yeah, um, on a team that that's got fifty eight wins at the break. Yeah. So if you told me fifty eight and forty in 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 February and March, I would have signed for that in a heartbeat. I wouldn't have thought they'd be nearly this good. But yeah. The, the the 58 and 40, if you're watching the team every day, looks a lot different than it, than oh, it yeah. would if you told me in, in, in February or March. It just does. Because it was 50 and 22 at one point. Exactly. Exactly. So. Let me get your opinion on the uh, the um, post-All-Star break, but more importantly, the August schedule. Because I'm we're going to run through it quickly. We'll get through this in more episodes and really dive into it more. But I want to run through it really quickly because the Yankees have an opportunity to take, to take a little bit of a step. Coming out of the All-Star break, it's a little challenging. They get a... They get Tampa, the Mets, and Boston, and then Philly. That's not easy. That's a really no. tough stretch at the end of July. But yeah. let's go into the start of August because they have a chance to make a run here. And a lot of these are home games. Toronto, who's 12 games under 500 going into the break. No one saw that coming, but they've stunk. Toronto, then you get the Angels, then you get Texas. All bad teams. Mm-hmm. Then you get the White Sox, the Tigers, the Guardians are good, but then you get the Rockies, the Nationals, and the Cardinals. Yeah, no, That is a has to very, be. very winnable month. You that have to finish to that be, month at oh, five yeah. to ten games over five hundred. Yeah, you cannot sleepwalk through that month. No, July is t- is a tough month. It's it's bad until the end of July because yes. uh, the Rays aren't easy, the Mets aren't easy with the way they're playing lately. Baltimore and the Red Baltimore, Sox. Boston is definitely not easy. But that August schedule, if you're the Yankees looking at it, there are a few series there that if anything less than a sweep is unacceptable. I'm saying it right now. <laughs> you're right. And you're right. That it's particularly the White Sox series, the Rockies yeah. series. Those are series yeah. that you have, yeah, you, you have to take. Uh, uh, and, but that's the thing though, right? Good teams do that. Good yeah. teams take care of business in those series. Good teams don't, don't stumble against, against those other teams. They don't. So go out there, take the games that you need to take. And, and that month has to be a 
seven over 500, 10 over 500. That's how you have to finish in the month of August because yeah. September don't get easier. And then you go into the postseason and you kind of want the schedule to get a little more challenging going into September. But August is the month in the schedule that you have to get fat. Mm-hmm. That, that's where you got to do it. And they already kind of did that in a lot of April, a lot of May. Stretch it out more, grow that belly a little bit, and and get into the postseason where you know you 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 can afford yourself to stumble and, and deal with struggling teams in September. You can, yeah. but 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 August is the month that you have to play at the top of your game. And for God's sake, go get a closer, please. Yes, yeah. Um, who who are they playing? Who are they playing for my birthday? Because usually that used to be a West Coast trip all the time. August twenty sixth. <laughs> <laughs> August 26th, uh, they'll be in DC against the Nationals. Ooh. Yeah. Who have been stumbling? Maybe who I have should really go to been DC. stumbling. Maybe I should fun go to trip. DC. DC's a fun trip, fun stadium. Yeah. I've never been to I was supposed to. I was supposed to go in 09. And then my friend was like, she wanted to go more around the corner from her house because she lives in Virginia, just past DC. And she's like, would you want to go to a Potomac nationals game? I'm like, yeah, I'll go to a minor league game. So I, I saw the Potomac nationals instead of the regular Not nationals the 15 years ago. Not quite the same, but it was cool. And I was sitting in like bleachers, which was like, you know, like actual, I felt like I was in a high school game. I was like, wow, this is, this is interesting. <laughs> really cool stadium though. Really cool yeah, stadium. It looks really, really nice. And I haven't been to DC proper other than a train stop in a really long time. So may I, there's an idea. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Because yeah, the Yankees have played like, I think they played the A's like three out of four years on my birthday mm-hmm. out West. Oh, I was like, God. why do I have to get stuck with, or they play Tampa in Tampa on my birthday usually, which is really also horrible because of how they usually perform in Tropicana Field. So um, and also please who wants do to well. Watch Tampa? Yeah, like who do please do well against the nationals on my birthday, guys. Um, they have, they're historically not good on my birthday. I did a whole blog post about it a few years ago with how they don't usually do well on my birthday. And guys, this is a big birthday for me, so please don't ruin it. You walked off on my 16th birthday during your worst season in the last 50 years in 1990 against Mil- I think it was against Milwaukee. So mm-hmm. try and make my 50th birthday a good one. Thanks, <laughs> especially if I might be there. <laughs> so, yeah. August. There's no excuse for a bad August. They have to treat it like April and May because Get they that. were doing that in April and May where they were beating the teams they were supposed to beat. But once the schedule got a little more difficult, that's when things started falling apart. So, and also in August, Stanton will be back. Hopefully. Um, Efros is be. on the way back. August is after the deadline. So they'll have a different looking team. Even if it's slightly different, they will have different people on the team. Mm-hmm. So just yeah get through july which again is tough we looked at july last month and we noted that it was going to be a tough go for them and yeah that's the month let's make this a different august let's make this not the worst august since you know because august 22 right wasn't it the one oh this is the worst august since 1991 it's like yeah let's not do that again Mm -hmm. let's not do that again Coming up next, oh yes, the new home run derby rules. Because as we said at the beginning of the show, and you can see it in the background, Brian is in a hotel room in Texas. He's there for all-star festivities, which is really cool. So yeah, we'll talk about the home run derby next. If you're looking for tickets for just about anything, check out the app Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and shows near you. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to moments before your event starts and even an hour after it starts. The weekend after the All-Star break, the Yankees are playing the Rays, and I see tickets for Monday because it's a wraparound four-game series, Friday to Monday, as low as $3 on the app. And guess what? It's a 105 start, and if you decide at 130 you want to go, you can, because Game Time allows you to do that. You can also find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for concerts, comedy, theater, and more. I'm going to be looking for Duran Duran tickets on Game Time because they're playing in October. It's going to be, Game Time is awesome. Just download it on your phone. It's really easy. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app today. Get $20 off your first purchase with code LOCKEDONMLB. Terms apply. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed.
Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And remember, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. So it's the all-star break. It's here. It's official. Um, mm -hmm. As we're recording this, it's official because it's 3.31 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. And there are new rules because they keep tweaking the all-star derby. So now there are new, new rules. And let's talk about them. <laughs> I do like the first round, um, the, the way they've changed it, because it makes it a little more fair. Because in years past, with the bracket system, you were having two guys that were hitting 45 tanks and competing in the first round. And then they're both out of the Derby so quickly. And I don't think you really want that. Um, so this year it's a little different in the first round. It's just hitters that are going up. It's, it's just hitters. There's, there's no back to back. There's, there's no anything. Um, I'll read it to you just to make it easier. Um, there will no longer be a head to head bracket and seeds in the first round as there were in past years. The eight hitters will compete against each other directly and the top four will advance to semifinal. If there's a tie between hitters after the first round, the ensuing bonus period will be broken by whoever has the longest home run in the first round, which kind of gives an emphasis for length, which I think people want to see. Um, it's going to go by time. So, uh, you're going to have either two minutes or, or 40 swings. And whichever and whichever is more is basically like, so if you get the two minutes without the 40 swings and it ends and if you get the 40 swings it ends and that's how many home runs you can really hit and then the, the top four are going to advance and then they're going to go into a bracket system which I think is better because then you're getting then you're getting the best home run hitters going up against each other which that is really more, what you yeah want. that makes more sense yeah so I, I like yeah. that change yeah um the bet the coolest part is in the bracket system if they tie right if they're tied with it it's going to go into a bonus system a bonus period which will be broken by up by 60 second swing offs with no stoppages and no bonus time. Ooh. So 60 seconds of, Oh, who can hit the most home runs in 60 seconds? Pretty damn cool. Um, I'm excited to see the stadium. Um, I'd never been to the stadium before. It's uh, number 20 on my list of baseball stadiums. Um, I'm excited to see what they do with the, with the roof. It's a bit, a huge talking point with, um, with what they've done. Um, the roof can be off and it actually has back paneling like windows and stuff. So they do say with the roof closed and the paneling open, it does create like a wind, a wind tunnel effect going through the stadium. Yeah. I wonder if they do that and try and create more home runs. Would that would be so. really cool to me. Um, so. Roof closed generally stops the air and doesn't create more home runs. Um, if it's a really hot night, roof open could create more home runs because of the hot air. The ball travels better. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited to see how this Derby goes. Um, I do have a nostalgia for the old format of 10 outs, but I do understand why they couldn't do that anymore. Right. Because the home run, I, if you remember like up at 2014, I believe is the year they changed it. But if you remember up until that year, I mean, Stace there, there were, they were, you were going years uh, where the home run derby was ending at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, yeah. it was going so long. And like, I love the home run derby, but some hitters that would go up there and they're taking every pitch. You, you, you can't allow that. Well, we used to make fun of it because they would have the home run derby listed on the TV guide, like on your TV for like yeah. two or three hours. And you're like, this thing's not going to end for another like at set, least hour and a half. Set the DVR to like hour, like the next three shows afterwards. Yes. You have to like Sports Center. You have to yeah. set it for the next three shows after just to get the end of the derby. Um, yep. I do yeah. miss those old formats of like the, because you're not, because with this format, you're never going to get like a Joe Mauer performance ever again, or like the, or like the um, Josh Hamilton at Yankee Stadium performance. Yeah, remember, remember the Josh Hamilton one where he hit like 40 home runs in one round? You're never going to get that again because yeah. because of the timer and then moving faster. Um, but it is fun. I'm I'm excited to see how many tanks these guys hit because I did bet. Um, you can bet on all of our uh, FanDuel, of course, has all these betting options, which is a great sponsor of Locked On Yankees. But you can bet longest home run, which I believe is at 486 and a half feet. So if you think someone's going to hit a 500 foot home run, uh, you guys can pull in some cash on, on there. Uh, lots of really fun ways to bet the home run derby now. Do you have a prediction on who's going to win it? I I don't want to say Alonzo because I don't know if he's <laughs> going to hit the going to win the third. I'll give you a sneaky one that I really like. Teoscar Hernandez. Mm. Got a lot of power and not a lot of people talk about him when it comes to and I feel like this is for a guy like that who's not known as one of the top power hitters in the league. He's going to come in with a little chip on his shoulder. So I like Teoscar Hernandez to, to potentially win it all. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I don't really, I don't really have a prediction, but I like that one. 
I like. I that wish one. Judge would do it more often. I do. Yeah, the I do, year that he did it in 2017 was so damn entertaining. It, it gave us the best, the best GIF of all time of Dell and Batantis l- l- looking like what? Like I love that. That's it one of my crazy. favorite reaction shots ever. Um, I still love All Star Miami. Weekend. I still love All Star Weekend, and so many people. Oh yeah. I think Major League Baseball has the best All Star Weekend out of any sport. It does. It still does. So, I mean, I'm going to check out, I'll report to you guys back tomorrow on the All-Star Village because I'm actually going to be heading there uh, after this. So I'll check out the All-Star Village, which, by the way, I don't know if you're aware, is in the old Ranger Stadium, which is still standing. So I'm very excited to see Double Fold. I've never been to the old Ranger Stadium either. See, that's cool so, that they're doing yeah. that because then- So I'm going to see the old Ranger Stadium have, and, the, and the new one. Yeah, you have the new one where you can just have the All-Star game and keep yep. it. And then you could do all this other cool stuff in the other stadium. It's probably hot because there's no roof there and you're in Texas, but it's still cool that they have that whole other building to do stuff in. And Very much looking forward to it. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. I didn't realize that until earlier today. I saw, I think it was, oh, Joe's McFly from John Boy. Yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. there because they're always everywhere. All there. And um, I was like, oh, I didn't realize they were doing that. And then I thought about it and I was like, well, of course, because they're like right next door to each other. Like, that's yeah. perfect. That is perfect. Yep. So um, are you going to be making any shorts for us on the uh, channel and recording will. things while you're I will walking? try. I will. Okay. I will. I will take them and I will send them to you. And if they are poor quality, I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. But I will um, do my best. Yeah. But you can post them directly if you want to. That's fine. You don't have to send them to me. But no. Um. Yeah, keep an eye on the channel because you might see things. You might see things. We won't guarantee them, but you might see things. I'm going to do my um, best, people. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, I understand. You're excited. You're at the All-Star Game. You're in Texas, and you're seeing a stadium that you hadn't seen before. And, you know, you're going to want to do the pre-cell phone thing where you're actually experiencing, in, experiencing That's things how I without do things, but... holding your phone all the time. Yeah, I know. It's so odd because most of my... Yeah, most of my life I haven't had a cell phone at this point because I didn't get my first cell phone till I was almost 27. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand how the hell we live without them. <laughs> I don't know how anyone got anywhere. How did you get anywhere? And I know because I used to be in cars with my friends when we were teenagers. We didn't have we didn't have any kind of uh, navigational systems in the car. We just were like, OK, let's figure this out. Big giant roadmaps where someone was holding one and that. Oh, wait, turn here. Just, oh, please. I would have never so, found yeah. my way anywhere. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So overall, the weekend was positive because they won the series, but it ended on a sour note and you never like to see that. But I'm just happy that they won the series because this, like we said, it could have been a complete disaster. Cole looked better. Heel looked great on Saturday, looked a lot better. Thank goodness. So he's work. He worked through some stuff. And he was able to... Um, yeah, I mean, the, the food tasted good going in, but, you know, you got food poisoning the next day. Yeah. So. Yeah. Eh. All right, one more time. You can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description under our YouTube videos. There's a 14-day free trial. You get texts from us. You can text us questions, reactions to the games. You can just have conversations with us. That's always fun. And if you are in the Insiders Club for Fan Mail Friday, which we do every week, your questions will get top priority and you will be in segments one and or two, depending on how many questions are asked. But if you ask a question on YouTube under our pinned comment, you will you'll get them answered on the show if they're not too complicated or long, Robbie Garns. Yes, I'm calling you out again, Robbie Garns. We adore you. We love that you ask us questions every week. Just make them a little shorter. Just a little shorter. And remember, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees Hometown Broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. So that'll do it for this edition of Locked on Yankees. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. And I'm Brian McCann. We'll see you tomorrow.